Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time here, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. In this video, we are talking about the Zika virus. The Zika virus belongs to the family Flaviviridae. Right, so the general features of uh, viruses in this family are they are linear single-stranded positive sense RNA viruses. They have an icosahedral symmetry or capsid and they have an envelope. Now the Zika virus belongs to the flavivirus genus, right? And it's an arbovirus, right? So we already covered uh, the yellow fever virus, the West Nile virus, the dengue virus, the Japanese encephalitis virus, right? So what we are going to do is, for now, we are going to skip these two viruses, the tick-borne encephalitis virus and St. Louis virus. So we will cover these viruses later. For now, let's talk about the Zika virus. On geographical distribution, the outbreaks of our Zika virus mostly occur in tropical and subtropical regions, particularly in South America, Africa, and Southeast Asia. On transmission, the Zika virus is transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, right, uh, and other hosts include monkeys and apes. The Zika virus can also be transmitted uh, via the placenta, right, so it can cross the placenta like other torch infections. So if you remember, uh, in the previous videos, we talked about the torch infections including Toxoplasma gondii, Trypanema pallidum, that's the causative agent for syphilis, Pavo B19, etc. Okay. Then another way is through sexual transmission, right? So this Zika virus, it can be transmitted uh, from men to women, right? Because uh, the Zika virus can persist in testicles, right? So the only way is from men to women, not women uh, to me. All right. Now let's talk about the clinical manifestations. The incubation period is 2 to 14 days, uh, and approximately 80% of the cases are asymptomatic. So uh, if there are symptoms, the manifestations are usually mild and last for 2 to 7 days, and they include low-grade fever, Flu-like symptoms, so this will be myalgia, arthralgia, uh, non-purulent uh, conjunctivitis, etc. Right, and also there may be maculopapular rash, which is uh, pruritic in twenty percent of the cases. Now let's go to diagnosis. Right, so definitive diagnosis during the first seven days of infection. We can do diagnosis using the PCR to detect the viral RNA in blood or in urine samples. During days 7 to 28, uh, we can do reverse transcriptase PCR or serology. After 28 days, right, we, here we can do serology to confirm the Zika virus antibodies. On treatment, there is no definitive treatment for the Zika virus infection, but we can do um, symptomatic treatment, right? So this will include uh, providing rest and giving uh, oral or IV fluids and also acetaminophen uh, to manage pain and fever. Okay, now let's talk about the complications of the Zika virus. The first complication is GBS, Golan Barre syndrome, right? So this is actually um, an ascending paralysis, which is a flaccid paralysis, right? Uh, then the other complication occurs uh, if infection happens during pregnancy, right? So the congenital defects will include microcephaly, thus craniofacial disproportion, uh, and also they can be uh, spasticity, that's contractures. So contractures is like uh, joint immobility and hyperreflexia. In some cases, there might be ocular abnormalities such as pigmentary retinal molting. Uh, and lastly, 
uh, miscarriage can happen, right? Okay, now on prevention, there is no vaccine against the Zika virus at the moment, right? So what we can do, we can avoid mosquito bites through different ways. That's number one. Number two, pregnant women should be uh, advised not to travel to endemic areas, right? And uh, after returning from the endemic areas, men are encouraged to use contraceptives for at least for at least six months and women for at least two months thanks for watching if you like this video make sure you subscribe leave a comment on this comment section and until next time